Well, Daniel, I finished 2-2 today. Um, did you feel you deserved more or was that about right? First of all, we wanted to win this first home game and want to start into this campaign with a back-to-back -back win without any doubt. But I also have to say, if you're two times back against such a decent side and also a side you didn't have the problem to bring many new faces in, it's a pretty settled championship side and definitely also a side who will uh, compete um, and uh, fight for the, at least for the playoff ranks. And you're that long back in the game, uh, then to equalize that late, also after the story of the game, it feels like a, definitely a valuable point. And uh, I think when you have to say, okay, we take the point and uh, we can live with it. Although I still got the feeling that we deserve more out of, uh, out of this game. Yeah? Because when you judge uh, the um, key scenes of, of this game, I think the penalty decision was, was never a penalty decision. It's for me incredible to concede such a penalty. Ten seconds before, Onel Hernandez was, was fouled with, with both hands on his shirt and the foul was not given. And then to give in such a situation, uh, a penalty situation, my smallest player on the pitch against the centre back was not was not even a touch. So actually, you would have to give then 45 penalties uh, uh, per game anyhow. So it's it's incredible. And um, when you have this in mind, you have in mind that um, yeah, we we missed Emi Buendia because of a, a message today, or that he can't play because of his injury this morning before the game. Then we had to substitute pretty early in the game. Kieran Dowell. Lack then, of course, a bit of creativity, but um, then also missed many chances when I think about uh, the scene with Premier Placheta out of six yards, empty goal. The last scene was, uh, with Timo Pukki, Pickle and Watt, was a really decent save. Um, I have to say, uh, I got the feeling we deserved a bit, even, even all the three points, but like I mentioned before, Preston was also there, was a decent performance, and um, they fought also uh, a lot today, and, and for that, I think it's also a point where we uh, can live with. You had a thousand fans in there with you, Daniel. How good was it to have some supporters back in there? Great, and I have to say it was noisier than expected. So the thousand had a had a great influence and uh, was um, uh, full of compliments uh, to them. So it's it's a great first step, and it seems like every, everything was quite disciplined and worked uh, worked quite well so far. At least that's what I've heard. Our our uh, the first feedback and many compliments. And I think. They also played a part uh, today because it was, of course, difficult for the team after, yeah, a few after the injury, after after suffering, um, yeah, this penalty decision after missing uh, chances uh, like like Placheta's chance, and then to 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 keep going, to have this belief and and to keep going to the end, and uh, then to be there was late equalizer, and still to keep going. We tried everything in the in the end, brought another striker in and risked everything and rewarded us uh, nearly um, pretty close to the, to the final whistle with the chance of Timo Pukki. I think they played also a big part in, in terms of, of keep going. And um, yeah, many compliments also for them. It was definitely also a point for them. And just finally, Daniel, the eyes of the footballing world were on you today, of course, for footballing reasons, but because of the pilot event that was taking place, did you feel it went well? And was there pressure for the club to deliver a good pilot? Um, yes, definitely. Yeah, because um, we wanted to be there and make sure that our processes, our protocols are, are right. And I have to say, big, big compliments, at least so to all what I've heard so far. So everyone, everything what I have recognized in the stadium was unbelievable disciplined. Also, the circumstances around the stadium was well organized and everything seems to be in a, in a right place. And exactly in this pretty prepared and disciplined uh, way we have to uh, we have to keep going and uh, it's also I think we can also be a bit, a bit proud that Norwich City was one of the first clubs on a, on a top level that was allowed uh, to to have this game and that we delivered at least with all that I heard uh, with, with such a disciplined behavior this is quite good and definitely good news for, for us definitely good news uh, for our reputation definitely good news for football um, in general and uh, hopefully we can add right now step by step uh, all the other uh, supporters that had to support us uh, at home and uh, hopefully we have a full carry road pretty soon right thanks daniel thank you tom thanks tom okay paddy david please Daniel, uh, Kieran Dow, what's the early sign on that? We've seen him uh, leave the pitch with a protective boot. Is that just a precaution? 
Yes, so he, it was pretty painful and we are a bit worried. We have to wait what the scan says. So can't tell you anything new. It was just an unbelievable hard knock. So it's also a straight leg in the situation. Um, yeah, we don't have to speak right now about a foul or whatever. Um, my worry is, is with Kieran, hopefully he's not out for, for, for longer. But at the moment, we have to be worried a little bit because we have to wait what the scan says. Uh, it's a bit too early to judge it. All I can say, it's, it's pretty swollen and it was pretty painful for him. And uh, yeah, our fingers are crossed. It's not too bad and just a hit and just a bruise. Uh, but we have to wait a little bit what the outcome is. Just to clarify, Daniel, are we talking, is that knee, left knee? Um, no, it's, it's, it's a bit more on, on his feet and uh, ankles, so in, 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 in this area, because it was a pretty pretty hard and, and uh, tough hit. Um, so for that, we have to check what, what happens with the foot, what happens with the ankle, um, all this, and then we have to see what the outcome is. Just to clarify, Buendia today, was that related to you? said he got a bang on his shin at the end of yesterday's session. Yes, exactly. So yesterday uh, afternoon, we decided, OK, it's possible that he is in the squad and he uh, was already uh, more like named in our, in our game day squad. But then this morning, or over the night, um, the bruise came really out. It was painful. We tried everything in the morning to, to make him at least ready for the bench, but there was no chance. He couldn't jump and, and sprint. We had last uh, final test uh, this morning and at calling at the training ground, but there was no chance. And was also a bit difficult for us, yeah, because Emmy out in the in the morning, then Kieran Dowell pretty soon in the game. We lacked a bit of creativity today. We have to say we had to force our our way into this into this game, and we had to force a result instead of um, deserve this result with fluent football. For that, um, I have to praise the attitude of my lads. So many many setbacks also today, and and difficult difficult things to handle. And uh, for that, many compliments for the uh, for the for the character today. today. I think we can, and will hopefully then play also better football in, in, in terms of possession, also fluent football. Uh, but in general, I have to, have to praise the attitude today. One huge positive as well. You asked about him on Friday, but first goal of the season with Timu. That just underlines what you said all along that, you know, at this level, he still can be a big, big player for you. Yes, definitely. And again, I was, I was happy with his, uh, with his workload. And it seems like to have his instinct back. Uh, also, the last scene, he was there on the first ball. It was a really good finish. And then more than, uh, than decent uh, save of, of Declan Rudd and uh, yeah, I think Timo is one of the outstanding players so far in the first uh, two game days in the whole league, so he was crucial uh, for for uh, the win uh, at Huddersfield, was crucial also today to get at least one point and I'm pretty happy that we have him and, and also, we're still playing with an unbelievable young side and uh, we need also his leadership and his experience in the dressing room but also uh, when we have uh, such a few difficult periods today on the pitch and also like that he shows his chest and he kept going and many, many compliments for Timo. From what you said at the outset, you obviously feel you can play better as a side, but are you taking a lot of positives that that's two games now in the championship, you've found a way to get a result and you'll need that throughout the season? Yes, definitely. Two games on, on this level, uh, two unbeaten is good, um, four points. Yes, I would have preferred six points, but in general, four points is definitely not a bad, bad average. And for me, it's also important. It's pretty long ago since we were able to, to win points out of a losing position. And, and to turn a game, it was, was one of our strengths in our last championship campaign to be there with many late goals. So from minute 80 on and uh, today we delivered again in the 85th minute. And even after that, so the hunger was still there. We brought another striker in with Jordan Hugel who wanted to turn this game completely. And the lads nearly reward themselves with... Um, yeah, with this chance, with, with Timo, I like the spirit and I like this attitude that we kept going to the to the last second. And uh, it's definitely good to, to win also a valuable point out of, out of a losing position. And um, for that, many compliments for this attitude. Final, final one, away from the game. I've got to ask you, what did you make, were you made of it, the whole Max Aaron's Barcelona story that came out this morning? What's your reaction to that? Yes, first of all, this is also one of these uh, topics that is not easy to handle for such a young lad. Yeah, when three hours before kickoff, such a such a message comes out. You can imagine uh, what happened uh, on his phone anyhow, even before before the game with messages or whatever. It's not easy for such a young uh, lad to to handle all this. But this is also what I mentioned. So the first four or five games will be will be tricky, yeah, because um, yeah, we, we live have to live with the speculation. Still, the to transfer window will will be closed, and uh, it's it's tricky for the lads. I have to make many many compliments uh, to to Max that he. Straight that focus today and, and focus was focused on the game and also was there with a solid performance. It's not that easy, not that easy to handle this for such a young lad, also not for his teammates uh, who are still young and, and think and speak about the situation. Uh, many, many compliments for this. And um, 
yeah, all I have to say it's it's not so much my 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 topic, yeah, because we don't won't comment any any rumors, any any speculations. I make my point. I wouldn't sell Max Owens for fifty million pounds, yeah, because he's too valuable for us. We definitely need him, and he was a player before the game. He's a player right now. After the game, he will be a player, and hopefully, pretty pretty long also for for Norwich City. And all I have to say. Um, if if anyone is surprised is surprised that he's linked with Barcelona, uh, I'm not totally not because I live with this since since weeks that he's tutored with the, the best clubs in the world. He's more or less on a daily basis uh, connected in, in Germany and tutored with uh, Bayern Munich, who won just a championship title with Borussia Dortmund, with Bayer Leverkusen. He's tutored with the best clubs here in England, each more or less on a daily basis. And with whom should he be uh, tutored in, in Spain with Recreativo Huelva or whatever? Yeah, of course, with Barcelona and, and Real Madrid. So for us, it's just important that, that we stay focused, that we don't lose a head or lose a nerve. So pay too much attention on this, that Max keeps going and tries to stay focused. And many, many compliments how we handled all the speculations, rumors, rumors so far. He's still an unbelievable young lad and, and unbelievably important for us. And we are all happy that we have him. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks Paddy. Okay, uh, John West. Please. Hi, Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> um, just a word about the, the goal scorer. He obviously missed a, had a bad miss, and then he scored a good goal. It was, it was, I thought he was very good when he came on. Yes, many compliments also to Przemyslav because it was a difficult game. He's an unbelievable pacey player and, and to have an, uh, always can have an impact on the game with his runnings in behind. And uh, uh, he started on the on the right wing. Later on, we changed the system. He had to play left wing back. It was also difficult uh, to, to come into a game and then to play different positions. And uh, yeah, of course, it's, he missed an unbelievable chance out of six yards, the, the empty goal. But I like this reaction, this attitude to keep going and say, okay, I can't influence what's happened. Uh, during the game, it's in the past. It's more like I can influence what happens uh, right now in the last minutes. And uh, yeah, it was was good that he was then there for the second goal and uh, was pretty calm in this situation with a, with a decent finish. And uh, yeah, many con compliments for Shumislav. I think he had definitely a definite uh, decent impact uh, to our game today. And with Max, am I right in saying Barcelona only wanted to take on loan? It was never, they never. It was just a cheeky sort of bid. It's, so it's, my, to, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's my and our strategy. We won't, we won't comment any, any rumors, any speculations. And, and we haven't done this with any links of my players with, uh, with Liverpool, with Bayern Munich, with Borussia Dortmund. We won't do this. Uh, also, also with Barcelona, it's, it's uh, always the same. Uh, so for that, I, it's, it's not up to me to comment any speculations or rumors. If I'm honest, I would be, would be unbelievably surprised if not all the top clubs in, in Europe uh, would think about uh, about a player like like Max Owens because he's he's top class, he's full of potential, but he's definitely our our player. And uh, if there is really then um, uh, one of the best clubs in the world and and uh, want uh, want him as a as first choice uh, on their position, they will come with a crazy offer. And then when the crazy offer will come, I'm pretty sure that then our key people uh, have a decision to make. But all I can say, so from the sports yeah. point of view. Uh, Max is uh, Max is priceless for us, and for that I won't uh, comment any any speculations. And finally, for me, can I just ask you quickly about um, the uh, taking the knee, which seems to have disappeared. Some clubs are not doing it. Some clubs are. What is the reason for that? I'm not uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, if I'm honest, but I think also like um, the Premier League and the football has also unbelievable strong voice. It's important when something happened. Um, that then there is really a clear message anyhow. And I think it was great what football did, what all the players, all the clubs did, what the Premier League did to, to send a clear clear message. Okay, there is no space for racism, racism and, and there is no, no um, difference between yeah, black and white people between men and women. So I think that's quite quite clear, and it's actually ridiculous that in our times we even have to speak about such a such a topic. I think personally, I think it was good to send out a clear message and uh, that everyone really took part. But then it's also like, okay, it's important that we don't give them a further stage anyhow to, to speak always about this topic because for everyone it should be clear there can't be any difference. Uh, there's just 
um, uh, one race and the race is human being and uh, that's that's the only point and for that I think is also then uh, the point when we have to say okay right now it's it's okay that we don't have to to say and speak about this topic uh, every day so it should be should be clear that the message is given and I think uh, great what the family has done.